um, I'm aware of it and uh, that's just part of streaming to YouTube and I will uh, definitely um, I will definitely uh, allow when I ask a question I will put a pause in um, Okay, and I think we and as soon as that motorcycle goes by, we'll get started. Okay, and welcome to uh, first lecture of Sweet Prologue Beginners, and we are going to have uh, a chance tonight to uh, explore some prologue, kind of for the first time one week into class, and um, and so I want to start with a little bit of explanation. So I'm going to go back to the screen. And I'm going to show you this diagram. This is kind of the big parts of Prologue. Prologue is a query language. You start by asking a query. You then um, make, you, you say, what things can I, um, or, or you ask, is this true? And usually in the, in the course of finding out if something is true, if it can be proven, then uh, the, then prologue will do a couple, it may have some side effects that are useful, uh, typical sort of functional programming side effects thing, or it may have a, um, or it may say, yes, it's true for this value, which is often used. So those are the usual two, two modes we might run prolog in. There is, um, is uh, so that means we're going to have two things. We're going to have a query, the thing we're asking, and we're going to have facts and rules if you've done the DIKW period pyramid, you know that uh, ultimately you end up saying, oh, rules are useful for inferring more information. And we call our rules case. Uh, there is a, some, uh, a linguistic difference between facts and rules in this, but in actuality, they're very much the same. Uh, a fact is just a rule that is uh, whose condition is true, so they're always true. Um, so, okay. So those are the two parts that the prolog search engine then will operate on. So in effect, prolog only runs one program. We can say J only runs one program the Java, the JVM runtime, uh, the, the JVM, you know, in, uh, that interprets class files. For Prolog, we only do one thing. It's called SLD resolution, and we'll spend all next week on it. So, we have to have these two pieces. Where do they come from? Well, the query is what you t at the interactor. Here is my terminal. Is that big enough for everybody? Say so if I need to bump that up. Um, so if I start Sweet Prolog, this is a an interactor. And I can do things like 
I can ask for what of x is x a member of the list A, B, C. And it will tell me A. And then it will blink at me like it won't give me another question mark minus prompt for another query. And uh, instead, it will stop and blink at me like this. And that's because it suspects it might have more uh, solutions for it. And of course, B is also a member of the list ABC, and so is C. And in this case, it figured out it had no, so uh, it just stops with C. Um, sometimes you'll see it uh, stop, and then it'll say, oh, I, I don't have any more. Uh, we'll talk about the hammer story. Um, so, uh, so that is the interactor. A um, few practical things. Uh, it has pretty much read line key. Um, we, we compile with either read line or edit line. Read line is GPL'd, so we compile with um, edit line. And if you really need full read line, you have to you have to do that yourself. Um, so, uh, and the other part is, uh, how do you stop them? Well, how do you stop prolog? You can query a thing called halt. And halt has the useful side effect that it stops sweet prolog. Okay. That's how you get, um, you get the, uh, hey, would, would somebody uh, respond to whoever came up on announcements and invite them to join the lecture that's in progress. Um, I, that would be a cool thing to do. So that gives us gets us the query. I've had uh, a couple of students ask me, so can I like type code in at this question mark minus sign? And basically, no, it's not a REPL. It's an interactor. You're in a query language, and there's two parts. The query is for over here. Um, the other part you're going to need is a knowledge base. A knowledge base is an internal set of representations of rules. That's what it is. Uh, there's no separate notion of, in Prolog, code is data. Um, so, uh, whatever you have in your knowledge base is your no And where does that come from, though? Well, when you start up Sweet Prolog, somehow it's got to load that in. And this it does that by is called consultation. Am I going too fast for people? How's the pacing here? Are people good? People following along? Give me some baffleometry here. Okay, so how would I start? I would start Sweet Prolog with Swipple, SWIP, and then the name of the file that I want to bring in. Uh, bringing in the file, I don't know if I said that, is a process called consultation, which is pro a bit um, pretentious at the time, but it's what we got. Uh, so, okay. All right. Anytime you you can reconsult, <clears throat> excuse me, reconsult your file. For example, if you're changing your file journal editor, this is very handy. Uh, there's a build-in make. It'll figure out what changed, and uh, and reload those that have. Uh, by the way, makes. Uh, prologue extremely hot swappable. Uh, you can, in practice, actually practically uh, 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 do um, uh, changes on the fly and not have to re-enter like user input. If you have, I, you, know, you get into this awful thing. There are six steps of user input, and then something breaks. 
and debugging that is a mess because you have to redo the user input so you do some thing like hacking in the user input or you just suffer with it um don't have log uh as long as you aren't storing your data in the um, module that you that you uh, are reconsulting, it'll stay there. Uh, a more subtle point is, of course, this is reconsulting, and it won't end up with like two copies of things. Um, if, if you change something otherwise, it would say, well, that's not the same as the old one. And it would leave the old one and give you the new Okay. Everybody, everybody happy with this? And then usually there is something that will thing off. You can make queries here. Well, I've just added now this it's a little program that solves um, one of these river crossles. Uh, and hey, I can run my river puzzle. Get several solutions, get tired of looking at solutions, and I hit period, and, um, and it quits offering me more solutions. Okay, so, uh, while I'm kind of on the subject of the Sweet Prolog environment, I'll show you a couple of other pieces. Uh, this is a little built-in editor. I think you've all seen it because I asked you to, to make certain your graphics were working. Well, that's fine, but um, a convenient use for real work is to say edit. Um, and this will bring it up. Oops, um, your YouTube's pretty choppy uh, on your end. <coughs> Excuse me. How is it for everybody else? Uh, I'm, I heard lots of really good earlier. So, okay, this is um, this is uh, the little editor. I'm going to go back and do something. However, uh, just basically because I forgot to mention it. And that is, you'll notice there's a period on the end of everything. Prologue does everything in turn. And when you type in something you want, uh, uh, when you type in something uh, that is a term, uh, pro know where it ends and so you type a period so okay and that is going to be true within five well so you'll get really used to typing periods video is a bit choppy and bearable I think that's where we want to be it's the audio that's important okay semi-transparency of the console has some flickering. Ooh, the trans the console is indeed semi-transparent. I don't know why that is. I'll figure it out. Um, but I'm not going to do it now. Uh, uh, half an hour digging through the terminal stuff uh, is not where we need to be. So, okay. Um, so I invite you to, to follow along at this point. Um, there is a called Adults Children in the lecture, in lecture one, in the student folder in Google Drive. And if you have Sweet Pro World, um, stick it in some directory, change to that directory, and then do what we said before, Swipl, space, and the file name. Uh, note that your your life will if you start for now if you start this from the directory that the file is in. Uh, so why edit with if you have make with an editor that doesn't hew humans? Um, so the little editor you can take it or leave it. it. It has the advantage of being really good about finding mistakes in your prologue. Um, so even if you're using something, uh, looking at it in the built-in editor can be worthwhile. 
uh, but you're perfectly free to use any editor you want. The reason I insisted everybody make certain it was running was for uh, something else, which is the graphic debugger. Okay, we have seen the program run. Uh, I'm going to give it just a moment for GenCown for everybody to grab that file. And then we have we have seen this program run. Um, and the way you run this program is you ask whether Go is um, and it runs the program as a side effect. So, uh, Norbert, uh, uh, yeah, I, the reason I uh, wanted you to make sure it was working is so the graphic, you could make sure the graphic debugger was working and it was easier to give directions to start the editor. Um, so, if everybody's got the file, I apologize for not sort of saying that before that you need. Um, and while you're there, grab the uh, the file called units.pl. Um, in fact, should I start with units? Um, yeah, you know. Um, no, I'm going to start with this. Uh, okay. So when you start it, it prints out a set of moves for a boat. Uh, for the little pro problem, you have a small boat. It can take only one child and an adult and an adult or two children or a child and a dog. Three adults, two children, and a dog on one bank, the left bank, and you want to move them all to the right bank. So I'm going to look at my code and wow, prolog code. This first line, um, everything in Prolog is one of two things. A comment, or it's a term followed by a period. So this is actually a term followed by a period. The uh, colon minus is what's called a directive. Uh, but an operator and says um, run this at compile time or at consult time when you reach this point. Hey Norbert, did I answer your question? Um, so, okay. So what I'm going to do now <clears throat> is I'm going to start the graphic debugger uh, and uh, and then I will uh, trace through this program and kind of show you the flow of, of prologue reasons about things. So there's a couple of ways to bugger. One way is to put a spy point on go. That would do it. Um, the other way is you can insert um, a call to the library predicate gtrace and code where you want to break into it. Um, so in this case, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to say, hey, can you prove to that gtrace and go is true? And Prolog will naively go out, fire off gtrace, which will drop itself it into the debugger, and then it will attempt to debug go. Boom. Okay. So, all right, we got green. Space gives us in. S gives us, and then you all know this painful thing with debugging where it's like, oh, I hit, I don't think it's that, and you hit S, S, and after half an hour of like being in the middle of chasing this thing down, S one too many times, and darn it, you went over it, and now you have to start again. Well, with Prolog, you don't have to do that, because with Prolog, if you do that, you can hit and it'll back up one predicate and you can, and let you run it again. Of course, if you have side effects, the side effects will be repeated. Can't have everything. Okay. So the, 
go is true if and and yes i'm going to be i i wanted people to see prologue before they really started studying it in detail so i am showing you a bunch of code without having introduced a lot of this stuff so don't worry if your baffleometer goes up uh so go is defined as true if and it is true um, for some value and the crossing plan for that value of init is a plan and write plan is true for some init and plan all right and hey this is a of code and that's because pretty much it is um init is true well i only have one condition that can make init true and that's if its argument is this thing which is a compound term or complex term it's we use both terms <clears throat> sorry i got one too many characters in there i want to show you this uh this which means i am on the left and there are three adults two children and one dog on the right or on the left bank so okay so if that's the only way in it can be true so hey, uh, and it is um, when when it's this complex term. Okay, and um, of course when I run this, I'm going to get a plan. I'm going to step over it at first to show you that I do get a plan. Hey, I do. Uh, the plan you can double click. Uh, I double click there to get this come up. The plan is a whole bunch of moves. A move from left to right of two children then have one of the children row back then move one of the adults uh, and then I'll run out yes um, okay uh, the keys I am pressing um, I'm going well, anyway so um, I am hitting R that's the R key and uh, uh, that gets me back up to here uh, to the start of whatever I'm in uh, space bar gets me in and, um, I could hit space bar and go in but that is not very interesting so I go s and go over it okay and now I'm going to go over it again and I will show you this, which I got by on this spot on this thing. And if you double click anywhere in there, um, this is the local bindings. Uh, all essentially all variables are local scope in Prolog. So that's the only scope there is. Over here is the back, but since we're in prologue, this gets a lot hairier than a normal call stack, which we'll soon see. Um, then here, this is just a good way to inspect a single variable, uh, you know, laid out for, for pretty printing. Okay, and then this one, of course, will write the thing out. That's a little less interesting. I'm going to go back. I'm going to hit R again and restart. Okay, I have restarted. I hit space and go to uh, go into it. And then this time I'm going to hit space and we will look to see how it makes a crossing plan. Okay. Now, haha. -ha. Here's a note, an important comment. Um, I will tell you, comments are important in prologue. Because the language is so flexible that it gives you sometimes relatively few clues what's going on if you use single character and uh, don't uh, provide comments about what's going on. Okay. Arc states a states is a list of. Uh, complex terms left 
adults, children, and dogs on the left bank, and right, ACD, where the members are left bank, but the boat's on the right, okay? So we're always going to be keep track of how many people are on the left bank, all right? Okay. And we've asked, what is a crossing plan? Our program provides three ways of making a crossing plan. The first is that the plan starts with um, no one on the left bank, in which case we're done. Everybody get that? That's a little more woo-woo. Everybody get the... Uh, that if the list of states start with nobody on the left we're done okay cool all right my next trick is there's only really four legal moves the next excuse me, the next clause, um, is if the boat bank, um, that is our last, last uh, state, our state is that the uh, boat is on the left bank and, uh, and we have some number of adults, children, and dogs, uh, presumably not zero or we already would have handled it, uh, and we, uh, and then the third clause is if the boat's on the right bank. So, for now, we're stuck on the left bank, so we're going to be in this clause. Member is a library predicate that ta just um, is true if its first argument is a member of its second argument. You say, hmm, are there any solutions for move or move as a... Right? This is the thing. Four. Um, and yes, it's going to give us the first one. So, um, the truth is that there aren't that many different ways. Uh, you can put an adult in. You can put a child in. You can put two children in. You can put a child and a dog. That, it turns out, is the only possible legal moves. So, okay. So I have, um, I have a, um, the next line set does destructuring. Uh, if you know Clojure or Haskell or Scala, I think, uh, you're going to have seen destructuring. Um, and uh, this is simply, I need the out of this complex term. So I'm going to do something sneaky. I'm going to say, what term LR with three arguments, what three arguments would be the same as move? And of course, that just gives me the three arguments. And those, they've got to be those three numbers. Um, the next problem we've got is, do we actually have enough people on the left bank to move. We can't move an adult over if there are no adults left. Can't move the dog over if there's no dog left. We've got the dog on the right bank already. So we'll check that for adults, children, and dogs. Um, and now we're going to figure out what the new state is. And uh, gosh, that's actually not all that complicated, right? We're just going to move the people over. Okay, so I've got a move and I've got the original state. Um, notice I've, I've kind of uh, remade my, my structure here out of A, C, and D, uh, just because I, uh, uh, that's what I had. Uh, oh, okay. I will subtract off the number of people in the boat, and we'll move the boat to the right. 
Okay? A new state will be true if the last argument is the result of doing the move that's the second on the first argument. There we go. Okay. We have a new state, which is on the right with two adults, two children, and a dog. So what have we done? We have moved one adult across the river. Now, um, question for the audience. Is this a smart move? I will wait the 10 seconds. Are you guys out there? And what do you think? I see somebody typing. Backslash plus means not. And uh, yeah, because the only thing you can do with that adult is have them row back across. But we've got to, and it makes poor decisions. Not a good move, no. So, okay. So the next line says, uh, yep, it's a no op. Uh, okay. So uh, the next line says, uh, is this new state our list of previous states? And the truth is, I, a bit, and we want to check for this, and the reason we haul in our entire history of states with us is because otherwise the computer would foolishly move the adult over, realize it's not a idea, good idea, and move the adult back, move the adult over, back, move the adult over, move the adult back, and this would go on forever. So, I want to say... Is it provable that the new state is safe? And if it is, <coughs> and then I want So I want to say, is it not provable? And at some point we'll discuss open and closed world uh, and uh, um, uh, and uh, negation is failure. So, um, but not today. So, so this is actually only good. This is only a solution if it fails, right? If there is no solution. Okay, so it's red, which means there was no solution, which makes sense. We just have the initial position and... Uh, uh, past in this case is going to be nothing. So we just have the initial initial position to test for. So since that was full, not means that it's it succeeds, and we can try another move. Now we're going to recurse. Recurse. The boat's now on the right-hand side. So we, um, we want to use the rule for the right-hand side. Okay. Uh, and there's really only two useful things. Uh, this, is, this is a good point about Prolog is having a proof search doesn't mean your domain knowledge is useless. Prolog will do its depth first search thing but uh, in this case, um, there is no point, is there, let me ask you, is there ever a point, is there ever, ever anything to be gained by an adult rowing back or ever? And 
waiting for the 10 seconds. <sighs> no. Okay. Yay. Uh, no, there's no point. So we don't even in the possible rules. Yes? No, there, Norbert, there is no point. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, you know, the adult could with a child, but then the only way the adult can get back is, again, with the same child. Right. We want movement to the right of adults. So, okay. So the only reasonable things to do are get two children on the left bank or one child on the left bank. Argument that holds for the adults holds for the dog. Right? The dog can't row itself, so it's not going to be useful as a um, uh, as a kind of other things. Okay, so I'm going to ask for one of these. Now uh, you'll observe something here. Uh, this is my stack, but what the heck? It's like list of things. It's some complicated uh, set of stuff. Remember that in the previous frame, I can actually go back to the previous frame, uh, we were on the left bank and we up here, we chose one of these four first. Now we're down here and again we have one of two moves. So that means there are some other possibilities that we didn't take. So, very much the same. Uh, we need to get the initial number of people because we're always tracking number of people on the left, so we do a little bit of math uh, with the total number of people to make certain we have enough people. Oop. Uh, and I'm going to do that again. Uh, and I hit R to do that again, and um, okay. And um, our plan is we're going to move two children from the right to the left. That's our plan move. We have a little problem with that. We have two children, and we have two children on the left bank, so children on the right bank. And if there are no children on the right bank, so when I do, okay, um, hopefully, I, uh, let me know when I'm back. Please let me know when I'm back. Uh, this should be happier if a little lower intrinsic quality. Let me, yay, I'm back. Okay, cool. Um, cool, cool, cool. Uh, okay. This should give us better quality. I'm sorry, I, I was a little too aggressive about the quality settings on the streaming. Okay, so here I'm going to, um, I'm gonna go do this again right at a, a crucial point. And remember that we moved an adult over the right bank, and now we're trying children back to the left bank and we've discovered that we don't have two children in the right bank to do that. So the question is, where is the last place? <clears throat> so prologue is going to fail. I'm gonna say, I can't do that. <coughs> Excuse me. So it's going to back up. Now, what was the last he had? And I will take my question on the air. I will take my answer on the air. Where was the last place that we had a choice? Yeah, um, a specific, the most recent call to member, that is when we're going, when we had a choice of moving one child or two children from the right to the left. 
Yep. Remember that we've called member twice. Look up here, you'll see, in fact, we've got two of them in the stack. Uh, so the next thing that's going to happen, I'm going to hit space. So LR, LR, and it's going to back up. Now, now watch this space, what move is. And hey, it's going to back up. It's going to undo all the computation that's done since that member. And now it's going to bind move. It's going to try giving me a different proof. This is why Pro will give you different proofs at the top level. It's because it's treating you the same way it's treating everybody else. That is, everything does this trick of giving you multiple proofs. In fact, this is Prolog's only control structure. This is influence flow of control, um, flow of execution. So, okay. Now we got one child. And I'm not going to wait for it, but you can predict what's going to happen here. We don't have one child either. This time, we don't have any more solutions in member. We tried the last one. So where's it going to back up to? When I hit space, it's going to back all the way up to the previous move. And say, this did not work. Since I can't make a crossing plan, starting with an adult moving over, I will, uh, that's, it's going to keep failing backwards. And I'm gonna roll this down a little so we can see the member. And notice it tried one adult and no children and no dog. That's what move is. One level back. And then we go back to the member. I will hit S. We will go over, and this time it will offer to move one child. That's a more reasonable choice. We will destructure that. We have enough to do that. That is not in our previous list. We're making progress. And now I have a child. This time, can again I'm, I'm hitting s uh, sorry I hit space to get into this thing I get over um, this time of course I don't have two children but when I back and it gives me one child it will succeed we've got enough folks to do move uh, we can figure out what the new move is. And I hit S and um, it's not uh, detected a loop yet. But now that doesn't get us anywhere either because all we did was row a child across the river and then row it back. Okay, and so this goes. Uh, obviously, we could be here quite some time if I just ran this. I'm going to hit F, um, which right finish. That's F as in Fred. F. Um, and um, I wanted to hit F in there. I ended up with F on member. And you'll note, in fact, that at this point, I have a stack 23 uh me choices of member back in because we're making and now I'm going to go all the way back up to the top and I still have all those choices uh, in case I want to back up and you'll remember when I started this I demoed the program and I just ran it and I told you about the semicolon to give 
give us extra extra copies of the plan. Uh, write plan is not very interesting. It's just recursive. Uh, it's just a recursion that goes through the list and prints the elements. I'm going to hit S and go over it, and I will hit a space. So that's my little demo. Um, and I think I'm comfortable with what I did here. Um, I I had a another program in the in the waiting, but I'm not going to use it tonight. Uh, somebody's asking a question, or I see typing going on. So it's, I realize I showed you a lot of material that I didn't prep you for tonight, but the fact is that mm, all the learning dependencies for Prolog make a nice uh, loop. Um, Charles, yeah, I mean, I mean, of course, eventually that would bite us. Um, uh, actually, um, I, I have another, another river problem, um, that, uh, that I've expanded so that you can put in any size of canoe. Um, and it's one of these, uh, it's the old cannibals and missionaries problem. And, um, and the, uh, and the, I expanded it so you could have any size canoe. And then when it turns out there are lots more combinations as the canoe gets bigger. So, uh, you need to, um, so I had to change some code. A nice thing about Prolog is you can do these things as facts and then, um, and then, ooh, uh, if some of your things are just facts and then, oh, there's this other case and I have to get it out of the database, uh, well, then you just add a new clause and say, here's a new rule for how to do this, which is to get it out of the database. Uh, might even, you might do that deliberately. Uh, for example, um, suppose you just kind of know 